Hi, I'm Roxy. I usually show you my process from blank page to finished work, but today I'm starting with something I painted last year as a base. I call this Karen Zombie. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Karen meme, this is where it all started. This woman with this particular haircut who wants to speak to the manager. Uh, I'm sure most of us have seen a woman who generically looks like this and likes to make a scene in the shops because she felt she wasn't serviced adequately. I guess someone at some point gave her the name Karen. I don't personally resonate with that, seeing as I know two perfectly lovely Karens, or actually Karens, seeing as that's how it's pronounced in South Africa. Uh, one of them would be too shy to ask to speak to a manager, and the other one would charm the pants off the manager. But it is what it is. Everyone knows it as the Karen meme, so this is the Karen zombie. I guess she wants to eat the manager's brains now. So um, I painted this concept zombie as a joke in the theme of my favorite computer game, Seven Days to Die. It's a post-apocalyptic zombie survival game. And I first got the idea for the, the, uh, the Karen zombie when I noticed this haircut on one of the player models. Um, so I painted this just for lols, um, but what I'm going to do today, or should I say starting today, because I doubt I'll finish it in one sitting, I'm going to be turning this into a landscape painting with 1080p dimensions so that my husband, who's a full-time Twitch streamer, can use it as a Be Right Back OBS overlay while he's streaming this game. So I have an idea to add a manager zombie for her to be chasing and mine and my husband's player characters may be lurking in the background uh, watching the scene unfold. So to start with I've widened the canvas and the first thing I need is a good zombie pose for the manager. I'm kind of digging this pose right here. Let's block it in. I'm painting on a new layer the original was painted in Corel Painter, but I'm continuing this in Paintstorm Studio. I just saved it as a PSD file, which is a format both programs share. If you haven't watched another video where I previously mentioned it, you may be wondering why I'm using a different program. And the simple answer is that Corel Painter lags every time you resize the paintbrush. And I've discovered Paintstorm Studio, a $20 program, doesn't. So until Corel fix that, if I need to do something where I'm going to frequently change the brush size, like painting, as opposed to drawing, I'm going to do it in Paintstorm Studio. Actually, I'm going to change the pose slightly so he's got a spazzy foot. You know, like all the nerves are severed, so he just has to drag it around. While blocking in the pose, I was thinking about clothing. And I remembered Seven Days to Die actually has a businessman zombie. So I'm gonna fire up the game in creative mode real quick, uh, spawn in a businessman zombie, see if I can get a good look at his suit, maybe take some stills. So I'm loading up the game now. I'm gonna go into creative mode, spawn some businessman zombies. Um, if if you're a sensitive viewer, you probably want to look away for a minute because they're they're not pretty. <laughs> Although uh, the likelihood of you watching me paint zombies is probably low if you're a sensitive viewer. But just thought I'd throw that warning out there anyway. Okay, debug menu. Let's spawn in a businessman. Oh, looks like we've got uh, another friend there as well. So yeah, not a bad suit. It's been through the wars though. Sometimes when you, uh, you smack them on the head Pops it like a grape. It's quite fun. I'll see if I can get that. Yeah. Okay, let's spawn in another one. He's not dead. Okay. 
pleasures. Well, I think we've got the reference we need. I've got the businessman zombie footage frozen on my other monitor for reference while I flesh out the manager here. I'm just working in grayscale. I'll add the colors later once I'm happy with the values. Uh, if you're a beginner painter or not a painter, um, what I mean by values are lights and darks. For building up a form after I've blocked in the figure as a silhouette I use a brush with high transparency and I just basically paint the light. I like to imagine I'm working on a 3D model and then light sources are being added to the scene so I have to work out how those light sources would affect the model. Um, in this case I would have two main light sources. I have an ambient light from the sky of course and a sunlight dipped quite low from the right hand side so this is probably a sunset or a sunrise. So what that means is the brightest parts of the model will be facing the sun on the right. It will also have a bit of a yellow tinge to it and also the surfaces of the model that are facing upwards will be lighter than downward facing surfaces because of the ambient light. I also need to take into consideration the tones of the materials. For example, a white shirt needs to be lighter than a dark brown suit almost regardless of where it's facing. Without these considerations it's going to look like it's uh, made out of grey plastic. The folds and creases of the fabric usually have ambient occlusion which means the light won't get to it. The ambient light is occluded those will be the darkest parts of the model. Definitely want to give him an FML expression. Even in his limited zombie brain, he knows he's being pursued by Karen. This arm could be longer. Man, I need to organize these layers. Looks like I painted some white instead of using the eraser. I'm so used to painting on one layer lately, I didn't even realize that. Maybe I can get away with using a layer effect to hide the whites. We'll see. No, I need to stop being lazy and erase the white. This road needs an edge. I see they've added that in the game now it never used to have. I should probably work with a perspective grid. Does this have a perspective tool? Seems not. Guess I'll have to build it manually. I'm not sure what kind of buildings I want so I'm going to try uh, roughing out a few shapes. Okay so the horizon line is probably here. 
The horizon line is the eye level of the viewer. We know it's below the manager's chin because we can see the bottom of it. And we know it's above his hands because we can see the tops of them. Right, so I just created something in Corel Draw, which uh, if it works, should save me some time in future projects. It's basically a whole bunch of lines that radiate out from a center point. And the center point will be the vanishing point where all the horizontal lines recede to. So it'll be off the canvas and I'll need to drag the circle a lot bigger. Well, shit. Looks like the program crashed. Maybe the circle's too big. Well, I figure we don't need the whole circle, just a portion of it. So I'm going to try a cropped version. Then we need one from the other side because we're working with two-point perspective. Cool, so here I have a grid to work with. All I need to do is make sure all horizontal lines are receding to the two vanishing points. Hmm, if I dupe this businessman and scale it down along the perspective grid, I can work out how big the other two characters need to be. Yes, that's come in handy, but I'll hide them for now. Still not sure what I want to do with these buildings, but I think if I color code these grid lines, it's going to be easier to see which line recedes to which vanishing point. What the hell is this? What did I press? Is this a perspective tool? Oh, come on. How does this work? Okay, so I'm back. I've just read the documentation and it seems that this program does indeed have a perspective tool. If you're familiar with this program, you were probably shouting at the screen the whole time. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought about cutting that whole thing out of the recording, pretending it didn't happen, but I'm going to leave it in. Uh, not all programs have perspective tools, so who knows, it might help someone in another situation. This works so well, it's almost cheaty. It's even constraining the brush strokes to the grid lines as I'm painting, and so much cleaner than having a whole grid. I suspect this is going to be really boring to watch and I won't have much to say so I'm going to time lapse the background planning phase quite a bit. I think we're starting to get there. Just to show you my reference, I've got this idea for the building on the left, but I'm going to break it down uh, on the road facing wall in mine. And I've got this sort of idea for the right hand building. Also not going to copy it exactly. In my mind, it just needs to feel like it's part of the seven days to die universe, not uh, be an exact replica. So I got up for coffee and forgot to switch on the recording, but basically what happened is uh, my husband was looking at it 
and he came up with this great idea that uh, one of the survivors could be holding a crossbow and just shot the manager in the knee which is why he has the spazy leg so I started blocking in the characters before I realized I hadn't switched on the recording again so this is where we're at as you can see very rough so you didn't miss much really need to work more on these buildings though so more time lapsing coming up decided to add a pile of rubble here. You can see that in the game quite a bit, especially in the wastelands. A bit of long grass in the front. This road needs to start looking more roady and uh, I need to mark in the slabs for the uh, sidewalk or ledge thing. Some cast shadows are going to make these zombies look like they're actually there instead of floating layers. I'm using a brush here called Ayanami. It was created by Boro Dante, aka Daniel Shirakin. He's a huge inspiration of mine and this brush of his has come in so handy on quite a few occasions. It's basically just some scattered randomly spaced particles. You could use it for dust or lint or fire sparks, whatever. I'm using it as texture for the tar road. So I'm painting a section on a new layer and then warp transforming it into the perspective of the road. Some will be painted slightly lighter than the base tar and others slightly darker, just like the variation you'd expect to see in an old road. Adding a pale, dusty sky background. I'll probably put some trees in there later. Time to add some life into this businessman. I'll start with the skin tones. We want it more yellowish and grayish than normal skin. As you can see, I'm color picking from Karen, using her as a palette. That's a COVID haircut if I ever saw one. <laughs> Let's fix that. He also needs an ear. He gets a pair of mouth. The blood will be dull, uh, like a dull brown rather than a bright red because it's old.
His suit in the reference is dark brown, so going to stay true to that. I think he should have some dried blood on his hands too. His suit's looking too new. Let's add some war wounds. So, an arrow to the knee. If you're a Skyrim fan, that should give you a chuckle. Uh, in the game, one of the businessman zombies' pants leg is shredded, like a dog got hold of it. So I should probably do that here. Seems like Karen's got an edge of light here. Didn't notice that with her original background, but looking unsightly here. Handbag shadow can be better. This pose is looking a bit stiff. I want it to look more relaxed. Yes, leg up. And this building needs more detail. So time for the perspective tool again. Walls are looking a bit smooth, so I'm going to add some ugly texture just using brush strokes, and then I'll start to blend them in. Hmm, I'm no builder, but I think it probably makes more sense to have the rebar facing sideways rather than upwards if this is uh, only one floor. Well, it's a, it's a new day. Forgot to start the recording. <laughs> Um, as you can see, there's some cracks in the road and uh, some trees in the background. And I've just been looking at that building in the back and not really feeling it. So I'm going to change that up a bit. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm selecting the corner of this foreground building with the polygon lasso and um, I'm going to copy it to a new layer and uh, then I can paint freely behind it. It's just going to make things a lot easier then I don't have to be so careful not to ruin the edge of the, the front building. just realized the lines on this side of the building aren't facing the correct vanishing point. Let me just quickly paint over that. Always a safe bet making the bottom of the building darker. It's closer to the dirt and further away from the ambient light. So chances are if there's any kind of gradient, it'll be darker at the bottom. I 
want to show the sunlight on this side of the building so just painting with a yellowish brush and then I'll just use overlay on the layer and that should give the building a tinge of yellow I like it but it could stand to be a bit more saturated so I'm going to give it a second coat I'm going to paint a wash of this dirty gold color over the background um, building and then I'll just lower the opacity to create a, a sense of aerial perspective to push that building further back it also helps with making the important foreground elements um, a lot clearer don't have that background noise just gonna sharpen up this rubble pile a bit need to add a few details here and there to make it look legit and a bit of gold here and there like it's catching the sun in places maybe there's some metal in there just realized it's getting a bit late so I'd best turn off flux if you don't know what flux is I'll put a link in the description but um, it's basically software that limits blue light um, later at night so uh, it takes the strain off your eyes when you're working late but um, because it's introducing some more yellow tones I don't want it to affect my judgment so I'll turn it off for now just filling in this grass a bit more I learned a fantastic grass painting method from Borodante whom I mentioned earlier um, to try and summarize it real quick what he does is he paints the darkest bits of grass as vertical lines and then he chooses a lighter highlight color and he starts painting oblique blades of grass so it kind of simulates how the light would be hitting the bent or tilting blades of grass and when you keep this in mind painting large areas of grass is a lot less daunting obviously also needing to keep perspective in mind the blades of grass closer to the viewer will be the biggest and the clearest while grass back here will be more like noise or texture you're not going to see individual blades of grass at this distance so wasting your time if you're if you're filling it in blade by blade time to add some stick bushes these are a common sight in the game they're usually the first thing people start breaking down so they can get wood to make an axe Now I'm going to start shaping up these two player characters I previously blocked in. They're by far the worst thing in the painting at this point. So that's where I want to focus my time for now. The cinder block he's leaning on is also really common in the game. You will see them randomly all over. I 
I haven't given the clothing much thought, but can't go wrong with blue jeans. And uh, I think I'll go for maybe an olive green for that jacket. Adding some contact and cast shadows. Totally winging this face. Probably should use reference, but I'll see how it goes first. looked up some crossbow reference on Pinterest. See they usually have this little loop thing on the end. Need to change the angle of her head so she's looking down because in the overlay um, the two characters will be having a conversation. There's something unbelievable about this pose and I think it's the rubble. Um, gonna work on it to make it look a bit easier for her to be standing on. Let's give her some cargo pants. That's a sensible way for the apocalypse. Barbed wire is something that you can add to your bat in the game. Always a favorite. should have actually made the underside of the bat darker before I painted the barbed wire but um, a little trick you can do if you do things ass backwards um, is you you just paint the shadow on a new layer and give it an adjustment like overlay just realized this head is massive <laughs> we need more atmospheric perspective again I'll just paint that dirty gold color and then turn down the opacity it's such an underutilized trick a lot of people just want to make um, every part of the painting with the same saturation and sharpness
and the air can be a bit lighter back here where it's closer to the sky. You know we're getting there when I'm signing it. <laughs> Not quite there but almost. So it's a, it's a new day and I actually need to wrap this up. I thought I'd have more time to work on this but we're moving the schedule up. Um, my husband is going to start streaming this a little later today. So I quickly want to add, first of all, a broken window. Those perfect windows back there have been boring me for some time. And I also need to make the road look a bit older. So I'm adding more cracks. This is what roads generally look like in the game. So you can see mine is way too well kept. I'm just painting in a loose pebble here. It's also something common to see on the roads in game. It's actually the only way for a character to get the stone they need for the stone axe in order to uh, continue mining more stone. Hmm. So I guess this is it. I know the characters at the back are a bit weak, especially their faces, but at 1080p the viewers won't really notice. So I'm going to save this and then I'll be back to show you the finished overlay. So this is uh, the overlay basically. Um, the only thing I can't show you you'd have to see it live, is uh, in the corner here there's a BRB that's kind of animated. This of course is a Skyrim reference here. So he'll be using this as his um, be right back overlay when he goes to take a break. Well I guess that's it. Thank you for watching and uh, much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. Uh, until next time, God bless.